After 30 years in power, one of the last images of Hosni Mubarak is one of a frail old man caged in the dock at his trial in Cairo. It's a far cry from the reputation he cultivated over the years, that of a regional strongman, a man fit for the world stage. Former Vice President Mubarak assumed power in October 1981, one week after the assassination of President Anwar Sadat by Islamists. As a response to the perceived threat from extremists, the former Air Force commander decreed a state of emergency to give Egypt sweeping powers of arrest and detention, a tactic he would use continually over the next three decades. Nothing if not a pragmatist, Mubarak fostered American approval and ultimately support by maintaining peace with Israel. Over the years, he became the mouthpiece for moderation in Arab dealings with the Jewish state and Jerusalem's most important ally after the United States. In return, Egypt received billions of dollars in U.S. aid and military know-how. Mubarak saw to it that Cairo was an enthusiastic member of the Allied coalition against Saddam Hussein's Iraq in the first Gulf War in 1991. He was seen by many in the West as a beacon of stability in the tinderbox region. Mubarak became synonymous with Egypt, but 2011 was to be his final year in power as people inspired by similar protests across the Arab world took a stand against corruption and oppression. Demonstrations in and around Cairo's Tahir Square called for an end to his rule, and in February the newly appointed Vice President Omar Suleiman announced that the 82-year-old had stepped down, prompting wild celebrations in the streets. Then, following an on-off trial, Mubarak was sentenced to life in prison for his role in suppressing the uprising. The verdict came, perhaps fittingly, on June the 2nd, in the midst of Egypt's first fully democratic presidential elections.